Now call back to order. Um, we have before us the personnel director, Mr. Rich Franks, and if you would just review, also deputy director, if you would review the, um, just an overview of your budget, and then we'll go to any questions. I will do that. I think it'll be first, relative. First of all, I'd also like to thank you for, for waiting. I know we're way behind time. Thank mm -hmm. you. I always find it interesting, and thank you, mm -hmm. honorable members of the Ways and Means Committee for having us today. I have with me, um, again, Linda Thomas, who's the deputy director, who um, quite honestly oversees the Department of Personnel's budget and is our expert on the TO, et cetera. And additionally, I have with me Denise Drogi, who is the manager for Employees Retirement System. So if the committee has any questions, um, you know, we certainly can call upon her. And then also Karen Toll, who's the city benefits manager. So I appreciate the ladies for coming. Uh, essentially, we have before us this year a static budget. Um, the table of organization has not changed. I will call the committee's attention just to two significant items, um, actually three. One is the $500,000 that was in professional services last year for fire department promotional testing um, is not in this year because we're currently underway working with our consultants, having good dialogues with the consultants and the um, fire department about that process and it's moving forward. That's under Linda's helm. I'm only getting involved periodically, but um, that's moving along smoothly. So that is not in this year's budget. We're excited about that because it represents a promotional opportunity for a number of people since we haven't had testing really since, what, 2003? Three. 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 So it's been a long time. So it's a, a very um, interesting process and um, we're looking forward to that. The other thing which is a difference from this year is uh, the perf under the health, health uh, benefits section budget, there's been a reduction. Um, the budget director cut $500,000 from the budget, which was um, reserved specifically for the long-term disability program. Um, I had formed an ENA committee, and we had selected Hartford and have a contract with them. So I'm hopeful that the city administration is currently working with the comptroller's office um, to secure funding for that program. It's one of vital interest to me because, as you may know, the uniformed police officers have a long-term disability program. The fire department has a very vital, um, sometimes abused, disability program. But I sit as the secretary to employees' retirement system, and what I see is us lagging far behind. Um, Mercer's done a survey of employers. Seventy to eighty percent of employers have a long-term disability program. We do not. And what that means is that if you get hurt on the uh, hurt or if you're catastrophically sick and are not of retirement age, all you have is uh, social security disability. Um, you have to be vested in our retirement system in order to qualify for a disability benefit. And dead. And nearly dead. And it breaks my heart. And I have fought long and hard for that. And if I leave tomorrow, my legacy, if I can get it done, will be that one thing is is ensuring something that is an atrocious gap in our benefits. So that's my statement on that. So we're hopeful. I appreciate the efforts of city administration and the comptroller's office and any consideration this kind board could give to that because um, from Denise can certainly speak to that. We see when we have the employees come before us who are critically ill and not um, vested or have a leg missing or something where they can't do the job they were hired to do, this plan would provide that for two years they could get disability and after that um, they would go before the committee again and see if the um, disability could be considered permanent. The other um, change to my budget item here is we had requested um, $10,000 in overtime and some per performance money just for fire department testing. Um, sometimes my staff, uh, we never have overtime. My staff works 40 hours a week, except for Linda, who's on call 24 hours a day. But we, um, we do typically see that we have a extra activities, and so we have just included um, that. But that's just a, a relatively minor amount. It's not too troublesome for us. Um, other than that, that's about it. Um, the performance of the employee's retirement system was very good in the first quartile, um, tw top 25%. I think we were uh, returned about 18% instead of, which is way above the 8% that we're looking for. I'm also very pleased with health insurance. We got a figure, um, a renewal rate of 6.8%, um, which is below medical trend. And once again, 
um, is um, far below what the budget director uses to project the increases, which is 10%. We're um, engaged with that. All the women in Florida knows all too well how complex that issue is, but I appreciate the efforts of the two aldermen that serve on that committee as well and we're working through um, you know, implementation of that plan. So th that's really what I have for your consideration, and I'd be more than happy to respond to any inquiries or have Linda or my staff respond as well. Okay. Uh, Alderman McPherson, any more questions? Rick, just a little follow-up on the what you mentioned about long-term disability. Yes. So there is no long-term disability that covers city employees. Uh, forget police and fire for right now. Regular city employees. Only through our pension system. And a person has to be vested in the system. Five in years. Yeah, right. they'd have to have that and actually be of retirement age in order to collect that. Um, Denise, if you want to speak to that, give all the women more specific. Our pension plan works. Our criteria for disability retirement is very stringent. They have to be uh, disabled not only <laughs> from the job they were hired to do, but disabled from doing any type of employment whatsoever. So oftentimes we have someone who all their life has been labor intensive, uh, and now they can't do a labor job. They can do a sedentary job, but that they're not qualified to do that. Uh, they apply for disability, and because they're not totally disabled from doing any type of work, they can't be awarded our disability benefit. So those type of individuals are, are the type that Rick is concerned about. They fall through the cracks. They're, so they might be vested, but then they might not be eligible to age 60. Well, here they are at age 45, and they're not able to work anymore. So you're, are you looking for a disability policy that has what I call own occupation? Well, that would require a change in our disability law, I guess, which is not totally out of the question either. But at, at present, the way our plan document, the way the law is worded is that disability, they have to be wholly prevented from engaging in any, any occupation. occupation. Right. But did I, did I, didn't I hear that you are looking at change buying an insurance policy? We have a policy yes, now with policy. Hartford. Well, and what that do provides. Have it, yes. yes, we do. And did. that provides, if you cannot perform your own occupation. Correct, for two years. For two years, and, you, and, it's and during that, pardon. and is there an offset to Social Security? Uh, there's an offset to Social Security. There's an offset to any um, disability that you might require uh, or might be able to get through okay. um, employee's after retirement two system. two years, then you would presumably be trained during that period of time to do some other occupation? Well, we, you, would, you would have the opportunity to go before the vendor and then present um, additional information that you um, hopefully are either better or right. that you, um, at that stage, have to prove medically that you are not um, able to handle any kind of work whatsoever. So that is in place now yes. for, it is for all this year. city employees. That's okay, correct, all the And that is a uh, employer, a city paid benefit. It's city paid, it's, it's correct. contributory. That's correct. Uh, the, em the employees can't buy up. Yeah, but the basic yeah. is, is not yeah. the basic. We're paying for yeah. and then the cities yeah. can. Which I think you would have to have. Out. Otherwise, the only people that would buy it would be right folks that you know. I mean, you have, have lots of money. Adverse selection, and then you wouldn't be able to get the. Insurance. That's a very good point. We're seeing that with the buy um, buy up and all candor, only sure. about seventy employees so far. I think is that correct, Karen? Have bought up. What this plan provides is that you get fifty percent of your salary after a ninety day elimination period, okay. and up to a maximum of two thousand paid for by the city, uh, two thousand per month. Per month. Per month. And what's nice about the 90 days, the way the committee constructed this, was that the 90 days gets you through family medical leave. Right. You know, so you can take your family medical leave right. and then ease into this, you know, two-year period with um, disability before, you know, final determination is right. made. But the maximum benefit is 24000 a year. That is correct. So certainly not enough to incent anyone to. Oh, no. It's yeah, very modest. It's a very modest benefit. It is very modest, and, and it's affordable for the city for that reason. The buy-up is entirely employees, and there you can buy up to a maximum of $5,000 per month, yeah. but that's at the employee's cost. That's the loan, sir. Uh, yes, that's correct, sir. Okay. Um, no further questions. Thank you. Alderman Florida. I have no questions. Hmm. I'd like to thank all the women in Florida, though, for all of her work on the health insurance committee. <laughs> We're becoming pals over yeah, there. Hmm? Alderman hmm. Williamson. Yeah, just, thank you. Uh, Rich, just want to thank you. Understand? I know you said it's five hundred thousand dollars savings because of the fire test. We didn't have any testing 
Yes, yeah, so I'll can you can explain that to you another five hundred thousand dollars savings. So it's a million dollars that no, what it is is it was the five hundred thousand dollars was put put in our professional services account last year okay. for testing and we're, and this year we don't need it. Uh, we don't have anything in for um, promotional testing, and we still have many many candidates on the um, on the private list. So we don't need to do any kind of testing, you know, this year for the private. So um, the the firefighter. So we don't have any request for that. There's money that we. We would probably request that we don't need to use, in other words, because of lack of testing is what you're saying. Correct. We're doing the testing this year. We've already got it covered, and so we hope that we'll have a couple of good years out of this um, next promotional list that we generate. Okay. And how are we doing on working the compensation? I'm glad you asked that. I just did a five-year review. Um, I work very closely with the law department. Um, years ago, I, I did an analysis of workers' compensation felt that the, we were not using the law department aggressively enough. Um, I got approval from ENA um, to kind of jumpstart the program with an attorney, especially signed mm -hmm. from general revenue money. We've been able to do away with that, but we have increased subrogation um, up to 75%, meaning that we go after third parties. Um, I have seen the overall trend go down in terms of, of number of complaints um, that have um, filed uh, lost days, we, we monitor that, we monitor the total costs. Um, there was a little blip in the system last year, and that was the first um, decrease, uh, increase we've seen for five years. And quite honestly, that was due, with all um, respect, to coverage of two very serious incidents, one involving, involving a police officer and one involving a firefighter who were killed. Um, and it was determined they were in the line of duty. So those were very large, six, Seven figure, I'm not really great at math, seven figure kind of cases. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, the workers' compensation program is functioning very effectively. And with the police transition, we have our, I've already worked with Nancy Kistler, and we believe that we will see even further efficiencies with the combination of the police. We have two contracts. We're trying to renegotiate that contract. Um, we are getting the law department more aggressively involved in their workers' compensation affairs. They had some non-attorneys involved in the decision making. I have removed them. And so I'm real proud of what the law department, not credit to Patty Hageman and her staff for how that's functioning. We're also um, really happy with our citywide accident review committee. Um, what happens is we see people with multiple um, safety violations. And what we do is that we call those people into a meeting um, in front of the citywide accident review committee and they have to explain um, why the accident occurred, why the safety violation occurred. It's not used for disciplinary purposes but it's used for information. Mm -hmm. We've had some legal challenges to that and um, we have prevailed. Um, the law department has said that we do have a right as a committee to hold people accountable and also to actually direct that they attend these six citywide accident committee uh, meetings. So I'm going to be revising the regulation with the city councilor to make that mandatory. So we have people out there, I also reviewed the repeat list, we call them our frequent flyers. We had people t 20, 30 different safety infractions and vehicular accidents within the last few years. So that's just unacceptable. I, I can't explain as personnel director why they're still working here. So that's something we, we're, we need to roll up our sleeves and kind of address and I'm going to be encouraging the appointing authorities to look very hard at taking more serious disciplinary action. We've even reviewed our service rating so that there's a safety category. Linda put that in so that you can mark somebody unsuccessful in safety right. and pre, you know, pre-terminate them. You, know, you can get rid of people for safety violations. Any of you have had private sector experience know you have a couple safety infractions, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that, but I appreciate that question so very much. Really curb the, the incidents of regular employees coming forth and found uh, workers. We do believe that. And we also believe that some of the problems with Family Medical Leave Administration that was happening in corrections was leading to too many um, workers' comp claims. And I'd like to commend um, Commissioner Glass, who from a personnel perspective is doing an outstanding job in dealing with all issues. I am very, very happy with that. And so we've seen um, the complaints go away, discipline handled appropriately, family medical leave more under control. And it all ties together, family medical leave, disability. If you, if you offer employees the right tools, 
if you have a long-term disability program that, that a third party is evaluating, if you have family medical leave, if you have workers' comp, then you're going to see the employees doing, I think, the right thing, and that's kind of our philosophy. When it comes to the police department mm -hmm. and the fire department, how is that trend? Has it turned down when it comes to workers' comp? We have seen, well, yeah, we've we just had the work because of losing people in the worker comp. But what you find out mostly in worker comp is the price, the cost is going down, except health cost is going up. Yeah. So your incidents go down, but your health care goes up, your, your health cost goes up, which makes the price go up. I think that's a really good point. While we've been very successful in negotiations with our health insurance carriers, I mean, I've come to this committee and, you know, year after year said 4%, 5%, no increase, you know, 6.8%. Medical trend continues to be, you know, 8, 9, 10%. Now you'll read that some com companies are spending less on it uh, because they're cutting back. You know, we, we've been taking care of our employees. They're, they're maintaining the same level of benefits. but. You know, other organizations are cutting costs by just not giving insurance or, or raising deductibles. But that's a real impact on our workers' compensation costs. Every year, even if we see claims go down, say, by 5%, if, you know, if your medical costs are going up 10%. And, we're, and we also watch in the workers' comp the doctors. We had an incident in our own department. Well, our department, we're Ms. Right. Thomas isn't real forgiving, so she got a hold of a doctor who wasn't really doing his job, and I don't believe he's... With One of my own employees got injured and went, it was a worker comp, they got, and I knew what the injury was, and the report that came back from the worker comp doctor was not what mm. the injury was. Mm -hmm. So we were dealing and severely with And they put the employee those. off till the end of the month, and this was at the beginning of the month. And those are lost days. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know, but I took care of it real quick. She won't be flying again. <laughs> the employee was off from Thursday and came back to work on Monday. Let's put it that way. Last question. Um, strictly just regular city employees. Mm -hmm. What's your forecast? What's your feeling? What do you think and how safe is this account? You know, 20 years, 30 years down the road, do you think we're really safe as city employees drawing down our retirement or with the increase of, you know, the pension when it comes to the fire department and all that? Are I we think there's... Deputy? I think that the employee's retirement system is in good position. It's about 75% actuarial funded, about 78% in terms of um, market value. We've once again exceeded, I did a review out of the nine years that I've been here, and Secretary, we've exceeded our, um, our actuarial assumed rate of 8% seven of those nine years. So the big problem is, is just people are living longer. Um, darn it. I know my old benefits manager used to say, you know, some of the people die off with you. <laughs> I got the solution, you know, but um, boy, I won't say that. that they would lynch me. But um, yes, it's, it's sound. I think we have a good program in place for employees' retirement system. I'm very happy with the consultants. Den Denise does an absolutely outstanding job, and I think our trustees are very vigilant. Um, with, we spend about eight grand a year. You right. know, that's not excessive. Police spend about 27 grand a year on their retirement. The, I do not believe the fireman's retirement system is sustainable. Yep. You know, it's up to over forty-five thousand dollars per year. Per you know, per and we've had other issues with the administration of that system. Um, uh, which we've had to take to our Board of Trustees. I'm deeply concerned about how that system is administered, and I'm looking forward to um, some positive changes. I know the city is considering all those actions, and, I, and I'm hopeful for a better day with that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All ahead. more? First of all, again, I'd like to commend you and your staff. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you guys have a personable type of attitude that I feel like I, I don't know a lot about the personnel issues, but, you know, I can simply find out by coming over and talking to you, too. I would feel comfortable without people saying, well, that's a dumb guy there. <laughs> well, they might still so, say but, that. But, but anyway, you. they're not beating up on you this time. I remember when I was on personnel, I thought they were really beating up on you. I thought it was very unfair the way they were treating you. Uh, the Hartford plan that we have, that it, it has a, a few stipulations in it that says that uh, if it's not accepted as a group plan, it has it been accepted by the city yet? Yes, it has. 
Okay, they still have that in there make you kind of doubtful to feel it. I was like, why am I feeling this out? Men and all of them were on the elevator this morning talking about that. Uh, so we can go on and fill that out. And is there a deadline when we can get it in? Karen, 31st, May 31st. Thursday? May 31st. May 31st. Friday. May 31st. Mm -hmm. Next Friday. Okay, and it's short term, long term. That's correct. We pay, we pay so much money based on our salary, right? I yes. think mine was like seven dollars or something. My salary was so low I only had to pay. Oh, uh, for the <laughs> for the additional coverage, that's correct. But the city, the city is picking that up. But again, you know, I'm, I'm concerned and I'm hopeful that um, that this will be, you know, um, blessed in next year's budget year because I think it's such an important point. Man, you know, why why they don't let some awards be full time and some be part time? <laughs> Based on our workload, <laughs> that's, that's it. Alderman French. Yeah. Um, so I also want to congratulate you guys. You guys uh, do a good job, and uh, Thank you, sir. I appreciate especially um, your bravery and independence. I know you you guys are able to do that because of some of the protections in the charter, but it is refreshing uh, in, around this building. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let me ask you about this long-term disability issue. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars doesn't seem like a lot of money. Is is that um, is that enough to cover long term disability? We believe five hundred twenty thousand is, and that even includes the firemen. We were um, very pleased with that amount. It's now what do you mean it includes the firemen? The, the firemen would also be able to participate in the long term disability. They're covered as well by our plan. Don't they have their own thing? They though? do. But theirs is, um, you know, different, lung and heart, et cetera. So we're, we don't know, but we're hopeful that, um, you know, this might also um, potentially at least, you know, could have some of them apply through the city long-term disability program, which would be cheaper than filing with their own. Mm -hmm. I can't commit to that, but I'm hopeful this, again, is another avenue for people to um, go through a disability plan that it, in the long term is is less expensive for the city. So if um, if we were to fund that five hundred thousand dollars this year, um, and you don't spend it all, does that does the balance roll over until next year? It stays year? in the seventeen thirteen fund. Okay, uh, but once we start funding it, does that mean we have to fund it at five hundred thousand or more every year? No, it does not. It, it, after a couple of years, well, it'll be based on experience. It might be lower if there's not claims uh, made against the program. You know, it could drop. Um, so that's you know that's the initial estimate, um, sort of like health care. And it's obviously you know something that the committee could consider. You know, each mm -hmm. year I was um, deeply disappointed when it was um, cut. Again, you know, ENA did participate in it and bless it. But I understand it's tough tough times, but I, I think it's a very important benefit for peace of mind. Obviously includes all of you. You never know if you're driving to work one day and mm -hmm. you know, and you get hit by a car and you can't retire. Um, it's a pretty frightening thing and we see it firsthand with our retirement program. So is the, so I see the line item there is, so is, is the fund already created, the policies are already drafted and everything? And so we've had a contract executed with. There's just no money in the pot. in this budget this year. But there's just no money in the pot at all? Well, it was removed out of the budget for this right. coming year. It's in the budget for this current year. It, we, it went into effect April 7th, I believe. Mm -hmm. So the coverage so will be through year. the end of this budget year, and then we would need the, the support of administration, et cetera, the city in order to... And I'm working with the Comptroller's Office to come up with the money. Okay. So, okay. so, so about, how much is, right. about how much is in the pot now? Right now, Karen, what's left this year? This year? Yeah, that we had encumbered. Oh, well, about 400 and something that we've got encumbered. Yeah. That's what I just, about Karen just did the other day. Okay. I told her. We waited so long in the so year, <laughs> you know, until April 1st for open enrollment that while we requested the 500,000, we didn't expend it because we didn't start the benefit up until right. April for open enrollment. So, so was that the first time it was funded or? Yes. Yes, it was. It was. Yes. Okay. I mean, it seemed He's to me been that. trying to get it for years. Actually, the first person who asked me to look into it was, was Alderman Schmidt. Um, and then I, you know, discussed it just briefly with this committee last year about my ideas. We, boy, we need long-term disability, and, um, and I was very pleased that, um, you know, we're catching up. I have a responsibility in the charter to look after employee welfare, and mm -hmm. again, that's just the one area. I think we have a wonderful benefits program. We really do, um, except that one glaring area. And so 
the consultant at Mercer, you know, agreed with us, and and E and A had agreed. Their reps had agreed with us that it was something we just needed to do. Well, I'll tell you, city employees get beat up a lot, and um, and I think you know this was a a pretty cheap thing, especially. Um, I mean, if we had done it around the time we were asking them to do furloughs, that's an easy trade there. I mean, we saved a few million in furloughs, and if we gave them a little $500,000 benefit, point. that would have been at least a show of good faith. So I think it's something we should look into. Thank you very much. Alderman for Carl. I have a question. Are there any other questions from members of the committee? If not, then we thank you very much. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Uh, that completes our agenda for today. This is the schedule for next week. See that policy will be there for